Alright guys, welcome back here to Fog Entertainment. We're bringing you the Mayans Season 3, Episode 8 Review. Aye, what's the episode title, mate? Upside Down Bad Rescue, some shit like that. Anyway, oh my it was a bad God. it was a bad episode that they said. I served. mixed up in Splendid Rescue. Was it that hard? Did you cancel it? No, I didn't cancel it, but was it that fucking hard? That's alright, no. We're back guys, right? The, the episode was shit, so it didn't deserve a... It didn't deserve me to get the name of the title right. Look, I'm work. I'm doing eighty hour weeks, right? And this guy thinks I can remember names of shitty mine episodes. Aye, Not well, a chance. How many hours are in a week? Because that's how many I dedicate. You I shove your eighty up your ass. I, I mean, I, honestly, I can't even remember like what the first episode of Sons of Anarchy was called. So pilot. Right, second episode. Seeds. Ghost at Crazy Town. That's the third one. Aye, uh, fourth one. Patch over. Fifth one was given back. I uh, given back. Aye. <laughs> AK yeah. 51's next one. Alright, calm down, right? Alright, well, the point is, we know we know the name of the Suns episode because the Suns were great and the Mayans is not. Speaking of the Mayans. You don't even know fucking one episode for Breaking Bad the title of, so. No, Breaking, I don't know. So for some reason, Breaking Bad never really told you the titles. Or I just. Well, I like the Suns did. Well. Like, no. just because just because no, I'm let's not, just dive into the just because I'm not a fucking geek that spends my entire day on Wikipedia looking up no it's like you're fucking watching it and when you did when I I actually do refuse so seeing you looking up refuse you have to fucking learn the episode I, 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 I mean I wouldn't know what a, I wouldn't know what a refuse is I so. you're a fat waster just like uh, Hank here yep Hank we got we'll kick off with Hank call me Hank better call Hank uh, uh, better call me a fat I'm sorry Hank I don't wanna well Hank looks like he's <laughs> to me, this girl has no in Nails has no interest in Hank, but he seems to think she's interested enough that he invite he get asked his mum if they, she can invite her for dinner. This guy, well, this is my problem. This guy's supposed to be the sergeant at arms. He looks like a big tough guy. He's like to me, he looks about what early forties, maybe late thirties. Yeah, and this and nail he's, and he's getting on like he's fifteen or something. I mean, here. This nails would kind of remind me, like, kind of give me the vibe that she's about twenty odd something maybe. Early twenties, mid twenties. No, but let's just forget. Mid twenties at the most. Aye, right, maybe, 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 even if she's forty, it's the way this guy's getting on. Aye. I don't. I fuck him. I don't. I don't like this. They're trying to make you feel sympathetic, so when he catches a bullet, we'll cry about it. Well, no, but it'll be tears of joy because I, I couldn't curl this. You think he's going to catch a bullet? I just think he's going to get heartbroken. And that's heartbroken. Well, what, he's got, what, what's he going to do? Rate his angel's kid and think he's the fucking top man? Well, well, that's, that's Hank covered this episode. Any closing thoughts on him? <sighs> Not really. I mean, to me, I think they'd be better off killing off Hank because he's got the sergeant par patch, and I mean, if he dies, they oh, need to okay. replace him. So y you could argue that would give another character a chat. But then again, if they never developed Hank in that role, then why would someone else get him developed? Well, I feel like if they put someone who's already developed in that role, at least they're already developed. This yeah, I know, but I think, that's, I, mean, I think that's a wasting opportunity. Like, you know what I mean? Like. Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of like Creeper, but I guess if you put Creeper in there, he's not going to do nothing, do you know what I mean? I talking about Creeper, right? What, what but we it? didn't see him, he's uh, the club have just forgotten about Awful him. Awful writing. I mean, they, they forgot about Coco for four episodes and now they forgot about Creeper. And Creeper's a guy that is he's stuck in another state, in a yeah. prison cell. Could have been murdered by now for all we know, but uh, the Mayans, Santa Padre, don't really care. Well, at least they didn't care enough to fucking mention his name, so... Uh, yeah, Creeper. See you where this show is, though, guys. I wouldn't even be surprised if we don't see him again. The show could fucking be cancelled. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, we, we may never see Creeper again. Because who I'm knows? back for uh, the guy I can't remember the name of. I mean, who knows if the guy's rooting for the rest of the season and they're not guaranteed a season four. Uh, we mentioned just, everything about this episode sucked, in my opinion. We mentioned Coco there. Um, he, he, he gets a mention of. He was getting slapped about by um, His dog. Letty trying to wake him up. Then that junkie hope. bitch Hope, who has got no hope because let's be honest, you're a junkie. Your life's going to end one way, not good. Um, she stabs him with the adrenaline to wake him up or whatever. He wakes up. Is this left for dead? Pretty much. That's well, wrong. I mean, they've left fucking creeper for dead, so why not? Uh, then Coco and Coco and Hope. I guess they agree to get clean together. No, put it this way, right? I know. I know you it's like say, Coco doesn't. Even, Coco's not even interested in getting clean. He just wants to do whatever Hope's going to do. Well, um, you could say Coco, right? He, he could return to the club this, that, and the, the third, the quote ABL. But if Coco died here, I don't even think it would have changed anything. I, I, I just feel like he's been irrelevant this season, and I think what, what the Mayans have even done to him just proves that. 
I think they've murdered the character. Honestly. See, now is he gonna he's got he's filled with adrenaline, is he gonna go and steal those three keys of heroin for uh Uncle Isaac, whatever the guy's name is? I don't know. Yeah, um I don't really know and let's be real. I don't I don't really fucking care. I thought Coco was one of the better characters going into season three, but I don't agree they've murdered him. Yeah, I mean they've murdered him while keeping him alive. Oh, it's, I mean, I just don't see how they can redeem his character. He's an absolute junkie. He's already stole a key of heroin for the club. He's a liar. He's um, basically doesn't give a shit about his daughter. Doesn't give a shit about himself, really. Doesn't give a shit about the club. It's hard to redeem that, you know what I mean? It's like a Poundland version of Juice. Because at least he felt sympathetic. Yeah, I, I did. I, I mean, I did feel sympathetic for Juice and I felt sorry for him, but he never really redeemed himself ever since... He stole that cookie. It was all downhill, like you know what I mean. Yeah. He, he never, he, he never got his spot back. He was always either just there because he had to do what Jacks asked, or, or you know, Chebs didn't like. Chebs was always like, you know what I mean? Like I think once you're kind of out, you never really earn your spot truly back. And I don't think we'll ever see Coco in the club like he was before. I don't think he's going to be. Oh, he's that guy we can depend on. If we're on a shoot, he's going to be. Oh, fucking snipe them off, picking them off one by one. He might get back in the club, he, he might share the table again, but I don't think it's going to be the Coco that we've seen in season one or as, two. As, as Bishop said though, guys, if he doesn't appear at the next meeting, he's out. He's out, so... He's done. I think he will be it. He's gone. He's finished. It's time to go. Speaking of finished, Hope looks like she's finished because she sneaked out the door when Coco was asleep, so... Good night, nay Hope. Um, there was nay Adelita, which... If that, was a, that was a plus. Oh, oh, this episode had Adelita. I would have just brought, 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 brought the rating down. Fuck it, give us. a zero. Uh, nay Adelita, nay shaved... Hit kids, nay nothing. So nay I mean, nonce, Adelita. I don't know what that. Well, with with a lot of Miguel being fucking depressed and moaning, and I mean, mate, just grow up, right? Your your mother's been dead for eight episodes now. Can you just move on? You're supposed to be this big cartel, man. Like, why, 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 why are you so? Why are you still down in the dark? I, I get it. It's sad, like, but I mean, Jesus Christ. Thought he was going to choke out Emily, but nah, he didn't. I was so a bit disappointed with that as well. Thought Nesta was going to be gone. Yeah, then he goes and um, goes to confront Nesta. Asks Nesta, does he know anything? And Nesta reveals that him and Alvarez seen bike tracks the night she was murdered. And Alvarez, well, he didn't really drop Alvarez in it. He didn't. Did he say Alvarez? No, but obviously it's connected, you know. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening here. Miguel obviously knows now that. Emily and the the Bishop Brothers, or not the Bishop Brothers, fuck the Bishop Brothers, uh, the the Reyes Brothers the are brothers. <laughs> the the Reyes Brothers were involved in his mother's death. So I guess over the next two, the rest for the remainder of the season, are we going to see Glendo involved with them? I don't know. You'd like to think so? Surely yeah. that's going to happen. Though he's like a one man army. The cartel's dead. All he's got's Nestor Alvarez. And whose side is Alvarez really on? Exactly. So. I mean, I wouldn't say, necessarily say he's on Santa Padre's side, but he's not exactly on Miguel's side, so... I mean, if push comes to shove, I think... I think Alvarez is Mayans over... Cartel, like, over Glendo. Uh, we did the feature El Paolo, he was back. Awful. Oh, I enjoyed the scenes with him, like, I mean, I was glad to see him back. Well, but... so did I, but why Why make a big deal of I mean, the it, crossing it, the border? Yeah, yeah, it was fucking... It was like the hardest thing to get into America. Then he this just... this would have been like the sun's showing up in Belfast, right? <laughs> and it don't you don't see any of them? Before. You just focus on the guys that are left in fucking Ca Cali. And, and, and then, then the next minute, later. it's Jack walks through the door and he says to Tig, "What's happening, bro?" I mean, you know, <laughs> no, like, what? Why? And then the guy ripped the pesh up. You smell like a wet dog. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, um, I thought that was funny. <laughs> I kind of like Delpa. I mean, I think your pal's character's cool, even when he's like moments away if he's potentially facing death he doesn't he's, he doesn't look as if he's come across as like afraid or scared or anything like that he's, oh, he's just... cool calm and collective and the, the guy's a badass so I'd like to ho hopefully we get more of him or the I, I, I'd like to see him appear heavily in the last two episodes but whether we get that or not I don't know it looks like he is trying to play one cartel off of another cartel I'm assuming that's his way of getting back at the Mayans but at the moment the Glindo cartel and the Mayans aren't exactly and especially when Miguel finds out this whole, well, he has the Reyes thing when he, he goes and confronts him. I mean, yeah, to me, that's going to drive a wedge further how, between the Glendo cartel and the Mayans. Is, how is playing the cartel against another cartel going to get you back at the Mayans? I don't really, I don't know. Yeah, um, 
To me, I, I honestly thought the play was for El Palo to go to Stockton. Yes. I thought that was the play. Stockton need a new president. And also, not well. In my opinion, I, well, I get that. But in my opinion, he is the guy who well, can not, go to the Suns and say they've killed two of your fucking. Yeah, members. or the Suns like that. Well, I'm not necessarily saying he just turns up and Stockton make him president, but no, it, but him, so, and, him, him and Stockton have, have go, both want it. So it would make sense for them to team up. I'm not saying he, oh, I'm not saying he takes the president patch, right. but he could team up with. Okay, dokey, right? I get that. But Stockton don't need any more motives. From El, they don't need anything. No, from they, no, they don't need. No, they don't need. Motor, I, no, they don't need motors, but they they could do be. I got a machine. In my opinion, El, El Palo is like the only guy that can actually get the, the sons involved here. That he knows they killed that Tommy jobber, <laughs> whoever the fuck he was, and and, and all right, he killed Montez, but the body's buried at their clubhouse. I wonder if uh, El Palo knows that. He probably doesn't, but. I don't know, let's talk about what's uh, secrets buried at the clubhouse. Speaking of buried and, and, and Montez being buried in that salt, do you think Taza buried him there so he could preserve him, so he could play with, so he could play with him later? <laughs> Fucking so, probably. I'll get, I'll get you later. For, for Brown you sugar, you know what I mean? Like, could, could that have been the case? So, yeah, we find out that Taza takes up the bum. So, yeah, I'm interesting. I'm a, I'm a... Uh, I know there's really rules. Dave up the bum or something. I know there's rules to being in the club. Uh, with certain clubs, different rules. Uh, obviously, in the Suns, you couldn't be black. I wonder if you're. I think if you're... this is a, a club-wide thing, but this just wouldn't be happening. Yeah, I, I understand. In the in the Mayans, lefty world, that this will probably be. They'll probably throw him a coming out party, and they'll they'll be supportive, and Hank will try and offer him to dinner, and like, oh, come on, <laughs> come on, Taza, I want to make you feel included, you know. Uh, Mom, can Taza come to dinner? You know, I mean, that shit will probably happen. But in reality, I, I mean, clubs wouldn't accept this. I'm not saying, alright, maybe they'd let him stay. But I think the guy would be getting rid of... See the way a prospect gets fucking bantered? Yeah. If, I, I think that's what would happen. If you were gay in one of these clubs, I think every day you'd be on, you'd be the brunt of the jokes. Yeah. Yes. But I've got a funny feeling if they ever find out, they'll, they'll be supportive and they'll probably throw him a coming out party. So like, no, like, realistically, guys... Or maybe they'll hire... Imagine that. They'll get, like, a male... They'll get, like, a, 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 a male to run the bar for him. <laughs> you know what? Nails, you're out. Fucking hammer, you're in. You know, like, come on. Like, what? I know, realistically. What's happening here? He would be meeting a Mr. Mayhem, for, or at least a strip of the patch, but. Uh, like... <laughs> Best case scenario, he gets fucking ridiculed for the rest of his days at the club. Yes. That's his best case scenario. He gets absolutely tortured. Any, yeah, by, I, by dog's abuse. I don't really. I mean. But, he, uh, he's, you know. he's been a part of the Mayans, which seems like a lot, because he's left that shithole. What was it called? Tijuana? Are they yeah, never going to wonder how he's never been in a relationship or... Yeah, or anything. Like, you'd catch on, I'm sorry, you would. So you think about it, any time they visit that whorehouse, like, he wasn't really... No, I can't really remember, like, but yeah, cause, but even before the show began. It's a bit it's a bit stupid. It's not like with Juice, where no one knew he was black, because, I mean, it's fucking, there's no reason for them to think that. Like, you can't look at him, like, and be like... Yeah. I know, but it, it just looks more Hispanic than black to me. Well, you look at Taz, I wouldn't audit, oh, he's a bit gay. Right, well... You know, I wouldn't, I, I, that never came across. That shit mind. like, but maybe like, not. as fuck, but never came across as homosexual, bro. Yep, uh, what else happened? Um. From uh, the Reyes family, so, uh, so we covered it. Is it just the Reyes family we've got to cover? Yes. Bishop had they had a set doing with Bishop, uh, the president that's had his patch stripped, and a president that we've never seen before. Looks but like he, Mickey Mouse or something. Yeah, he looks like he should be he sitting in a library or something, like reading a book. I mean, I've, seen, I've seen the actor before, maybe in this show, like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe in this show, but anyway, they're all sitting down, Angel walks in late, uh, Bishop says, where's Coco? Where the fuck's Coco? Where's my Coco Pops, man? Get that milk and Coco Pops in here now. Uh, Bishop says if Coco doesn't show up at the next meeting, next church, then he's out of the club. Um... Fucking Coco could be dead by the next meeting, so... I know. Who knows? Uh, they all start banging the table. The guy with the patch says... I'll tell you what, no, this was a I, Is it Ibora? Hi, Ibora. He says that I, I Bishop I is the... the fuck to death. Bishop is the one true king. Why are they so, all up this guy's ass? I get it, he's the fucking pipeline. He's keeping them up, but it's almost pathetic. It really, yeah. These other two presents just stay in the... The boy going to him. Is that their prospects? And this guy's the fucking messiah. I mean, they see any time Sam Crow shot down over chart. It was, it was never this level of degree. No, like, I mean they never bowed down. The Arizona chart is like my club, 
my rule. Yeah, they never bowed down to Clay. I think they had a bit of respect. Cause they, in Mother fact, it was, it was first nine and it's the Muller Charter. But... This is just... And Bishop is just not intimidating. He's a midget bastard. Uh, even, even, even that guy that was sitting on the left of him, the bald guy that's about as thick as my pinky finger, and he looks like he fucking reads books for a living. Not that that's a, you know, that's not a bad thing. Like, if you're intelligent and read books for a living, then fair play to you. But I mean, this guy looks like he works as a librarian. So, um, well, what would the point do? is, what this guy looks more intimidating. What would these two guys do if they find out, right? The prep, well, there's only the find out uh, Bishop's a midget. He's he's a midget. You've got fucking um, Taza, who's gay, the VP. The sergeant is getting on like a cuck. You've got the fucking a, a drug addict. The Reyes brothers, who are just. One one's a whiny bitch and the other one's got too much of an IQ, but he's also a retard at the same time. And then the rest of the charge is irrelevant. See, see if you actually break it down. I know everyone is... thinks Santa Barbara is great. The free head guys are pathetic. Yeah, the free head guys belong in the bin. They belong in that fucking bar of salt with Montes. Um, hopefully they end up there by the end of season three. Angel, one minute seems like a great guy, next minute he's his feelings are hurt and he's bitching out. Easy could probably run the charter by himself. Like, let's be real. Yeah. Coco's a fucking waster. Creeper, obviously, nobody cares about him. I'd say the only guy who could run it right at first is probably, I think, Taza. But once he finds that he's gay, it's just, it won't work. Though that the king will be gay. No, I think there's that, no, I it think just no, won't work. I think there's Mexican a, shit. I think there's only three possible members of the current club that could run it if Bishop goes. And we'll do a video about that. Later in the future, maybe but later on tonight. Opinion, though, I just don't see how Angel is easy to be present. Yeah, that, 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 that's the main reason I think Angel would be present. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> um, let's move on to these two. They're sitting at the dinner table. Well, yep. Angel's an hour late. I mean, why would? I mean, imagine waiting an hour. Reyes to wants to eat. They're like, nah, nah, waiting an Angel, waiting an Angel. He walks in. It comes in with his crate of beers, reminded me of someone I know. But uh, well, Angel, we're not going money. We, we won't go into that. Uh, they're sitting down, a bit awkward. Angel brings up the fact that Gabby's cooking their dinner in his mother's dead apron. A bit weird that Reyes would keep that apron around for, for like 10, 10 years. years. I mean, does Reyes cook in it or what? Does Reyes sleep with it? Does Reyes sit on the couch, bored as fuck, wait, sitting beside does him? Does he wear it when he fucking wraps his meat parcels? I don't know. Yeah, actually, he probably could wrap someone's meat parcels in that. But regardless, I mean, I think. I think Angel's making such a big deal over an apron. It's a fucking apron, mate. I mean, come on. He's there great now, is it? Uh, they, they don't seem too happy. <laughs> uh, Gabby announces that she's got a job in another state. Nursing school or something. Angel says, why the fuck wouldn't you leave? This place is a shithole. This seems to upset Rhea. It seems to upset everybody. Angel says it's oh, it doesn't. It doesn't upset Felipe till Angel's out the door. Uh, Felipe kind of wants him to stop, but doesn't really do anything to stop him. Reyes, uh, easy kind of stands up to him. You feel like maybe there could be a fight. Angel is, but then just doesn't really care, and he starts pouring beer over the table. Congratulations! And then he walks out. Uh, Gabby goes to pick up the beer, or sp clean the beer, and and then Re Reyes is like, "I said, leave it, damn it." So. Again, like this just this is weird. Why why is he like taking a full cycle at her but not at Angel? Unless he's gonna get his baseball bat and go and pay Angel a visit later this night, but uh <laughs> we don't know. I don't know what's happening there. So that was pretty much the that was Reyes' involvement done. Angel didn't real oh uh, Angel was it was announced by Nails that she's pregnant. I'm assuming it's Angel's looks like Hank would be I mean, the godfather or something. I mean I thought I thought Angel was gonna be pissed off about this, but he seemed to be Alright. Yeah, but he's a money bastard. He'll probably change his opinion. He'll probably change his mind on this by next episode. He flip flops a lot. Uh, then we'd, we'd seen some, we'd a lot of scenes with Reyes and Gabby. She, she took her to some sightseeing. She complained that Emily. That's a Nazi. Did it? What did it, Did Emily say you're 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 pretty for a Latina? No, but that's what she, no. She said you're pretty, and then but she's like, oh, but that's what all white. White girls say to us because we're a step below them or something, or maybe that's just how you feel yourself. I don't know what Emily. Did. I don't even fucking like Emily here, but that's just. So what? What would Emily need to say then? For her to find that and accept well, acceptable as a compliment? Would she? Would she need to? Boy, down to her, but like, would, would she, if you, I know would I'm she, white, but would she need to say you're prettier than any white girl I've ever seen? I don't know what the 
the fuck is this? I thought me. I, I mean, I thought maybe should have thrown her off the bridge. I for thought that. maybe Emily turned and says to her, "Oh, you're pretty. You're you're pretty for a, a Latina or something." No, some it's just you're, you're pretty. Well, what was your rally? You're ugly as fuck. I mean, what's your rally? I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why she's complaining about that. And then the show ends with them going to get ice cream, and there's like two army guys who I'm pretty sure we've seen all throughout season three, and I don't know if it was foreshadowing. Or at least there's been a police presence inside Santa Padre or whatever. A military presence and these two are making fun of um, Gabby and they're on about maybe getting deported and all this. Because the borders been closed. She walks in. Uh, she walks out even and says to Easy she doesn't want ice cream anymore. Easy sees these two guys. Walks in starts battering them. Two on one. Um, Gabby tries to get Easy off. He elbows her on the face by accident. Oh God, the he, inhumanity. Uh, he, he obviously he's, a, he's trying to apologise. The police try to arrest him. He starts punching the police, beating up the police. It's like eight on one and Easy's holding his own here. And uh, that's how this episode ends with Easy trying to, basically trying to check on Gabby but the police are arresting him. So, you know what? Awful. It was a long episode but n- and really not a lot happened here. 55 minutes of pure upper garbage. Not a lot happened. It's like, uh, I think what, what disappointed me with the most was so much happened in last week's episode and you wanted to see the aftermath of that and instead we got absolutely nothing. I mean Stockton, one of the largest char- one of the largest uh, larger charters that the, the Mayans have, their president gets wiped out, murdered by another charter and we get nothing. We don't get anything. Creeper in the lamb, nothing. Nothing. Uh, again Coco's not been seen with the club. There was no talk of there was, there was just no talking of what they done to Oscar. I, I don't understand it. No, 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 no retaliation, no nothing. El Palo's back in Mexico, uh, don't like that. As soon as there was attempted a, an attempted hit on Easy, uh, like it was almost as if fucking a war was going on, but a president gets murdered and nothing happens. Oh well, just, a, just, a, just another victim. So, I don't know guys, for me it wasn't the greatest episode, but I, I, don't, I didn't think it was that bad. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I gave it a 2, so I'm sticking with it. You give it a f- two, I got a four. That mean, we'll round it at a three out of ten. But uh, yeah, guys, there you go. That is it. I just don't get how you can go for like we give what like last week's a nine. How can you go for a nine to a three? Shit happens. Depressing. You can't have an episode like last week's and then have a one the one to follow up be like this. You can't. It's fucking stupid. Unless they plan on going all out in the last two episodes and they want to try and slow that down a wee bit, then I don't know, fair enough, we'll see. You can slow stuff down, but we need to see a reaction from Stockton. Why can't we sit around their table? You know what I mean? For fucking five minutes. Probably because they have no president and two of their members got wiped out. Have they got oh, anyone right, well, left? Uh, uh, Conche, why can't we see him talking to like the VP of Stockton? I don't know, something. Something, guys. But anyway, rounds out at a free. Check out all the other fids on Fog Entertainment. And uh, yeah, this charter's pish.